Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. Hi everyone, in this video let us discuss about urea cycle with structures. Okay, so coming to the urea cycle, normally this urea cycle will begin with uh, ammonia. Okay, from where of the, from where this ammonia will be uh, released means by the process of deamination. And what is meant by deamination? Then removal of amino group from ammonia acid, and that ammonia group will be liberated out as ammonia, and that ammonia will be used uh, in the urea cycle. You know, uh, you know about the deamination process, right? And if you don't know about deamination, I already explained in my previous videos. The link will be given in the description box. You can watch that video okay and the ammonia which has been liberated out from the deamination process will be used in this urea cycle okay and because of this ammonia only the urea cycle will get uh, originated and next the end product of the urea cycle is urea and this will be the molecular structure of urea okay and normally this urea cycle will get synthesized in liver okay this urea cycle will take place in the liver and the site of this urea cycle, the, the site where this urea cycle occurs is, is in the mitochondria and the cytosol. Normally, uh, up from normally, first two steps occur in the mitochondria and remaining steps occur in the cytosol. So how many steps are present total in the urea cycle? Totally five steps will be present. Formation of carbamyl phosphate, citrulline synthesis, formation of arginosuccinate, cleavage of arginosuccinate, formation of urea. And next, what are the enzymes which are used in the urea cycle means? Ornithine transcarboxylase, carbomyl phosphate synthase 1, arginosuccinate synthase, arginosuccinase and arginase. Normally carbomyl phosphate synthase is, should, be written, should be written first and ornithine transcarboxylase should be written second but I written reverse. But keep remember this will be first and this will be second. Okay. And normally this carbomyl phosphate synthase will be of two types. Carbomyl phosphate synthase 1 and carbomyl phosphate synthase 2. And carbomyl phosphate synthase 1 will be used in the urea cycle whereas synthase 2 will be used in pyrimidine biosynthesis okay and let us discuss about that pyrimidine biosynthesis in next videos so in this video i'm going to explain you about urea cycle by using this enzyme okay so keep remember this is the first this is the first enzyme this will be the second enzyme and third fourth fifth will be the enzyme so okay it's okay now let us discuss about the uh, let us discuss about this urea cycle by using an ammonia which has been liberated out by the deamination process right and this ammonia will get combined with carbon dioxide and forms carbomyl phosphate and if you see here properly, the enzyme which has been used over here is known as carbomyl phosphate synthase 1, right? But not 2. If you use 2, then it becomes then uh, the formation takes place with pyrimidine biosynthesis. Okay. And during this uh, reaction, NAG means N acetyl glutamate helps in the regulation of this synthesis of carbomyl phosphate. And in this reaction, two ATP molecules will be used and two ADP molecules will be released out and one of the inorganic phosphate will be used in this reaction because if you see here this is the ammonia group right and here ns2 will be formed and one of the bond uh, one of the hydrogen will form the bond over here and this is a carbon dioxide see wo, wo, you can write like this right and one of the phosphate this is a phosphate group this phosphate group will be liberated from the atp which has been generated into this reaction okay that's only the reason inorganic phosphate is one of the phosphate will be utilized over in this reaction and forms carbamyl phosphate okay so now here if you see here this is the first step formation of carbomyl phosphate so here the first step has been completed now coming to the second step citrulline synthesis so formation of citrulline takes place here normally this carbomyl phosphate uh, undergoes reaction in the by utilizing an enzyme known as arginine transcarboxylase and forms citrulline okay and here this will be the structure of citrulline okay this will be the structure of citrulline and now uh, it undergoes third reaction i mean it undergoes third step that's nothing but formation of arginosuccinate so if you see here this will be the structure of arginosuccinate and how this arginosuccinate will be formed by adding aspartate into it so this will be the molecular structure of aspartate and when you uh, in when you when you use this aspartate in this reaction then you know then only it leads to the formation of arginosuccinate arginosuccinate so if you see here how the arginosuccinate structure will be formed and if you see this is the aspartate right and this aspartate will get combined with the citrulline and forms arginosuccinate like this if you see here uh, this is the formation which takes place between the bond and your bond will be formed by liberating one of the hydrogen from the ammonia okay and next coming to the fourth step cleavage of arginosuccinate and here cleavage of arginosuccinate takes place wait a second and if you see here in this region the cleavage of the bond takes place so due to the cleavage of arginosuccinate what happens it leads to the formation of arginine 
okay so here fourth step also completed what is the fourth step cleavage of arginous succinate so here the cleavage of arginous succinate takes place and here this part will be liberated out as fumarate this part this below part will be liberated out as fumarate and the remaining part which has been formed as arginine by utilizing an enzyme known as arginous succinase okay and now this arginine forms ornithine by liberating the product called urea okay and here urea which has been liberated out is the end product of the urea cycle which i have said you before this will be the end product urea and this is the molecular structure of urea and how is the urea formed by taking intaking of height uh, sorry water molecule by the taking water molecule it releases urea out but and here the substrate will act as arginine and the product which has been formed will be ornithine okay so this will be the molecular structure of ornithine and ornithine will again form citrulline with the help of carbamyl phosphate by utilizing an enzyme known as ornithine transcarbamylase okay and again the total cycle will get repeated now i have said you that the site takes place in the mitochondria and cytosol right the first two reactions i mean from here to formation of ornithine and citrulline takes place in mitochondria now what happens is that the citrulline will enter into the cytosol and next the cytosol process takes place i mean this reaction process takes place only in the cytosol and again from the cytosol the product of ornithine will be formed right and that ornithine will again enter into mitochondria and again this process takes place okay so this is about the urea cycle and here if you see here the ornithine transcarboxylase is the enzyme which is, this is the second enzyme right here and this is the second enzyme which will be utilized here and next carbamyl phosphate synthase 1 is the first enzyme which will be utilized in this reaction for the formation of carbamyl phosphate and third enzyme is arginosuccinate synthase which has been utilized over here the for conversion of citrulline to arginosuccinate and coming to the fourth enzyme arginosuccinase so here arginosuccinase is the enzyme which is mainly used uh, for the for the in the reaction of conversion of arginosuccinate to arginine and here fumarate will be liberated out by the cleavage process okay and next arginase is the enzyme which has been utilized over for the conversion of arginine to ornithine and here urea will be liberated out by intake of water molecule so this is about the urea cycle and to the regulation of urea cycle the activity of carbamyl phosphate synthase 1 regulated by the levels of n-acetyl glutamate which is shortly abbreviated as nag and this n-acetyl glutamate is a allosteric enzyme and when this n-acetyl glutamate is in high levels then the activation of enzyme takes place so which enzyme activated the carbamyl phosphate synthase one is the enzyme which will get activated by the high levels of n-acetyl glutamate so normally this will be the molecular structure of n-acetyl glutamate so what is the main function of this n-acetyl glutamate if you see in the first reaction of urea cycle the carbon dioxide and the ammonia will get combined to form carbamyl phosphate by utilizing an enzyme known as carbamyl phosphate synthase right and here n-acetyl glutamate will be used as the allosteric enzyme okay so this is the main function of the n-acetyl glutamate and normally if you see here in the regulation normally the acetyl coa will get converted to coash by utilizing an enzyme known as nag synthase that's nothing but n-acetyl glutamate synthase and here the glutamate will also converted to n-acetyl glutamate by utilizing an enzyme known as nag synthase and during the conversion of this glutamate to n-acetyl glutamate acetyl coa is used in such a way that the coash will be liberated out and we converted this glutamate to n-acetyl glutamate right and now this n-acetyl glutamate will can again form this glutamate by utilizing an enzyme known as nag hydrolase so as we used here hydrolase the water molecule is utilized here and when the water molecule is utilized the acetate will be liberated out so this is about the regulation of urea cycle so now let us see the integration of urea cycle with tca cycle so if you see here this is the urea cycle and this is the tca cycle so here i have explained you about urea, urea cycle so what is the end product which has been formed in the urea cycle urea will be the end product and if you see in the tca cycle the acetyl coa has been used in such a way that the oxaloacetate will form citrate and citrate will form alpha ketoglutarate and here carbon dioxide will be liberated out keep remember how carbon dioxide will be liberated out and this alpha ketoglutarate will form the fumarate and the fumarate will form malate and the malate will form oxaloacetate again and again the total process will begins and here the oxaloacetate which has been formed will plays a major role in the formation of glucose and the formation of glucose from the oxaloacetate is known as the process is known as gluconeogenesis okay so if you see here the carbon dioxide uh, will be uh, will will be plays a major role in this urea cycle right and from where this carbon dioxide will get uh, will get liberated from the tca cycle i have said you right keep to remember here the citric citric acid will leads to the formation of alpha ketoglutarate by liberating and carbon dioxide molecule and this carbon dioxide will be utilized here 
by the, and it will be mixed with ammonia so from where this ammonia will get uh, will get liberated from the deamination process i have said you before in the step beginning step right in the deamination process the amino group will be liberated out as ammonia and that ammonia plays a major role in this urea cycle where that ammonia will get combined with carbon dioxide and forms carbamoyl phosphate and here it forms citrulline and citrulline will form arginosuccinate so here what happens during the citrulline to arginosuccinate uh, conversion aspartate will be utilized to form arginosuccinate and this aspartate Uh, which has been utilized over in this can convert this aspartate into oxalacetate by the transamination process okay by the transamination process it can get converted and now it forms arginosuccinate right and from the arginosuccinate arginine will be formed and here the fumarate will be liberated out and this fumarate which has been liberated out uh, will help to uh, will help in the continuation of the tsa cycle where the fumarate will get converted to malate and malate will convert to as oxalacetate where it plays a major role in the formation of glucose right and now this arginine will form ornithine and here urea will be the end product so what are the three integration steps which has been involved in this uh, integration type is that the carbon dioxide which has been utilized by the tsa cycle and the aspartate which helps in the formation of oxalacetate and the fumarate which helps in the continuation of the tsa cycle so this is about the int integration of urea cycle with tsa cycle so Hope you people would understand this video. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment in the comment box. And if you want notes on this topic, please come. Uh, please uh, join us in the WhatsApp group, and the link will be given in the description box. Thank you.